Look to the person next to you and say, I am still in one piece. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to the miracles in 2014. Yay, God. <laughs> Thank you for worshiping with us today. I'm excited to get to speak with you. Let's pray. Dear God, as we come to you today, I pray, Father, that no matter what's going on in our life this week, this year, that we can come to you today expecting a miracle, that we can come to you expecting great things in our life. Father, we surrender to you. We give our heart, our mind, our soul, our spirit. Father, within surrendering to you, I know that we're receiving the grace, the hope, the love, and the mercy that comes from you. Father, we're receiving that in all things. And I pray, Father, that as I speak to these amazing people that you have given at this time to be here and to get to share with, Father, I pray that you would let me sit down and you stand up and speak in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, or a year ago, six years ago, seven years ago, the first Sunday in January was our first Sunday as the gathering. Woo! Yay, God. I don't know if you know this, but God started performing miracles in the gathering's life that very day. God was performing a miracle in two people that had been devastated with life, with pain, with the loss of everything that you could have hoped for other than a marriage and a family, and that we hung on to greatly. But the thing that was so amazing is not only did he do a miracle in our lives, but he did a miracle in your lives as well. Is we got to all come together because of, of your faith and your hope and your trust in God that there's something great that's going to happen in these walls at the theater. Yay, God. And they have. We are a living example today of an amazing miracle that happened in 2006 called The Gathering. We've seen many changes in this theater. We've seen many lives that have given their hearts to Christ. We've seen much pain. We've seen much hope. We've seen many deaths. We've seen many births. And all in all, I know that God can be trusted and he still wants to do with us and through us miracles. And for that, I am very grateful. I'm grateful that every Sunday we get to come together in this theater, of which I was not even allowed to attend a theater growing up. <laughs> so I think God has to be saying, nah, 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 boo, boo. He has a sense of humor, doesn't he? <laughs> and that I get to come to a theater every Sunday but it's not just a, an amazing movie that can inspire you, but it's an amazing group of people that get to come together here and worship our Christ and help others connect to him and each other. For that, I am very grateful. As we know, life is a journey. It has been a crazy journey in many of our lives. It's been an amazing uphill climb, a downhill climb. But all in all, through all of our new normals, through all of our ups and downs, we know I'm committed to one thing, that God can be trusted, even in our circumstances. Yay, God. Solomon, a wise young man in the Bible, and Ecclesiastes said it very well. You got to hear the song that has even been transformed into a pop song in the 70s. During the hippie movement. <laughs> God had, does have a sense of humor, doesn't he? In Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8, it says, There is a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace 
and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. I do believe that there are many seasons in the miracles at the gathering. But I also believe that I think every one of us have gone through those seasons every day of our life. <laughs> it seems like everything hits all in that 24 hours. So the seasons that we go through are miracles that God brings us out of. But as I was looking at the word miracle, we use it so lightly so many times. We talk about it almost as this awesome, it's powerful, it's majestic, but, but yet at the same time, it is a powerful word. And I wanted to see what Webster has to say about miracle. And when I looked it up, it said, it's a miracle is an extraordinary event in the physical world that cannot be explained other than a supernatural cause. It's definitely a work of God. So you guys are miracles. I am a miracle. The gathering is a miracle. But within miracles, it requires a big other word called faith. <laughs> faith is a huge word that requires a lot. In Hebrews eleven six, in fact, it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, there are no miracles. There was a young man and woman in the 1950s that at one time had everything was going smoothly. Their life was uh, the season of greatness, the seasons of productivity, the season of joy, the season of hope, the season of love and laughter. All the things were growing right with them. They were living on cloud nine and loving life through, uh, through a lot of poor choices through a lot of bad decisions, uh, things started spiraling downhill to the point where they lost their, their job, they lost their business. Because they lost their business, they were losing their marriage because of the strain that was creating in their marriage. Because of the, um, the decisions that had been made they, as they were losing their marriage, they also were losing their self-esteem. They'd lost their job and their marriage. So now they'd lo lost all self-esteem. And not only that, but their friends had turned against them. So they were resentful and had lost hope in not only themselves, but also their friends. Their greatest communication at night was that they went over their stories about how they hated everyone that was in their life. <laughs> <laughs> there are moments that we can be there, aren't there? But because of fear and resentment and uh, lack of self-esteem, lack of faith, lack of hope, they had reached a point where everything was hopeless. They came to a place where they realized, though, that this was no way they could live their life. They were young. They couldn't live the rest of their life like that. There has to be some hope. There has to be something that would take them beyond this devastation that they had found themselves in. They heard about a young man named Norman Vincent Peale that pastored a church much like the gathering, that instead of condemnation and guilt and judgment and fear and all the rules and regulations, that he talked about the faith of Christ the faith in Christ. He talked about hope in Christ. He talked about the redemption of God. He talked about the grace of God, the love of Christ. And they started attending this place, and the more they went, the more they got curious about, are we at a place where we can ever have hope? Are we at a place where we can ever reach beyond this devastation? So they met with him, and his encouragement to them was, your story is surreal. It's one of the worst I've ever heard. But what I can say is if you will go home and start opening God's word and reading scripture that are hopeful, 
scripture of all God's promises that he gives us daily. And really invest your time and focus in on what God's word says to you. Somewhere, God will start talking to you again. As part of the memorization, they came upon a, a really powerful verse that said, Faith, it's in Matthew 9, 29. Faith, even as a grain of mustard seed, will solve your problems. And any of your problems, all of your problems, if you believe it and practice it, according to your faith, be it unto you. And then in Matthew 17, 20, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible. Obviously, the mustard seed is only a symbol of faith. But as you walk through the door today, you were given, or as you, the greeters gave you a package. And in this package is just a group of mustard seeds. It should last you a whole week. <laughs> but as he started reading this, as they started just going on and trying to get hope and faith and, and, uh, and get over their resentment, free their mind from the clutter, he started saying, you know what, are there really mustard seeds? I should say, yeah, I have a pickle jar full of them. There we have pickles, and in the bottom of the jar are the mustard seeds. And so he said, well, let me have one. So for the first week, he took a mustard seed with him and put it in his pocket. And if you see, they are tiny. <laughs> But he put one in his pocket, and of course, by the end of the day, it was gone. So he put another one in the next day, and, and it was gone. But he, the reality was that every time throughout that day that I face this different season, that there something has been torn down, my ego has been knocked down, my rem remembering of where I am, remembering I've lost a job, remembering that people, I've read, all the people that have done me wrong, all the pain that's in my life, that every day when I think, rub that mustard seed, I can remember that God's word says, if you have the faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. That, and also it goes on to say that as, small, as large as your faith is, that answer, that miracle can be even larger. So he said, he put it in the palm of his hand and he said, how in the world? You mean if I have that small of a faith, God will do a miracle in my life? And so he started carrying that with him and carrying it with him. And the more he did, the more it freed him from his resentment, his clutter. And it opened his mind and his heart to the faith and the hope that only comes through Jesus Christ. So eventually, because his mind was free from clutter and resentment and, and all of the devastation, the fears that had come in his life, he started dreaming once again. Imagine that. You've come to a place that you can dream again. And he started saying, I, I need that, but every day I lose it. I need that in, in something that I can grab and put in my pocket and know that remind me that no matter what's going on, that there's faith. If I believe, if I believe, I trust God, I can trust God, there can be a miracle. How large or how small, there can be a miracle. So he, they started brainstorming. They went to different places, looked at different materials, and eventually came up with a transparent globe where they could insert, and it was a long process. It wasn't just overnight, but it's a process of freeing his mind from clutter, a process of dreaming, a process of implanting this in a material that could become a tool where he could look at it and go, okay, God, I'm trusting you right now. I'm in the pit, but I'm trusting you, God. And remind him of even how far he's come because he had a little bit of faith. So as they came and they started developing this little globe with transparent material where they could visualize it and see it, they, they developed a, a little um, a charm 
where they could put in their pocket. And eventually people started, he'd get it out and people would start saying, what is that? And he'd share his story. And they started wanting to purchase. Where do you get that? Well, I can, I can develop it, but right now this is it. Well, hey, yeah, if you do it, I'll, I'll get that. So what had once become, had come, been anger, resentment, fear, frustration, devastation had now come into a very hopeful moment where God had used a miracle through a verse of all of his promises that said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. And as we know in our verses, it said in Ecclesiastes, there are seasons in life. Nothing happens overnight. But as it does, as it progresses, when you freed your mind from the clutter, it opens it up to a world of all new dreams, all new desires. So within those questions from friends and people that he didn't even know, he'd be in Starbucks drinking coffee and bring it out, that would say, where, where did you get that? He starts to say, hey, he and his wife, we can develop. We can develop that and multiply it and sell them and develop a company. We have no job. We can develop a company that will give hope and faith in the other people's lives. So they started developing them in, in a large amounts, sold them to a huge department stores. Eventually, they sold over 100,000, and they marketed all over the world to the point where now, because of their dreams and their aspirations, it's called, this one is the one that they developed was called the Mustard Seed Remembrance and it's unique to itself. They were the originators of that charm. And even on the top, they did something even, even more significant. The original has, is a globe. And on the top, there's three circles that represents hope, faith, and charity. And it's just so cool that their ministry that they would not have thought was a ministry that developed, not only created for them, but for the world and impacted people's lives, not just then, but for the rest, for amazing amounts of time, that today there's people that are du duplicating it. And many of them are still referencing it to the back in the 1950s when the Mr. and Mrs. Flint had developed a mustard seed remembrancer in order for their faith to grow so they could remember that faith comes, through faith comes a miracle. I do believe in miracles. I believe that in 2006, God performed an amazing miracle, as he's done many, many, many times in all of our lives. I know that we have faced much in the short amount of time that we have lived as the gathering. But I, believe, I do believe that the gathering is looking into a year, 2014, that we can receive miracles by having each of us having that small amount of faith that it requires to move that mountain. We have a pretty large mountain. <laughs> but you know what? I know that God can be trusted, and I know that he has amazing things for us in, in the future, in the year 2014 and beyond. How can we get that miracle, though? By the faith, but w number one is we've got to change our attitude. As you saw, no matter what devastation you have gone through, we have, I think, Individually, each one are facing our own devastation. We're facing our own resentment. Something that may have happened as a child that we still are hanging on to. Something that has happened recently that we're still hanging on to. But you know what? Those things have happened. And attitude is not. Attitude is the fact. The fact is not how you look at the attitude. The attitude no matter what the facts are, if you'll change your attitude toward them, the world and everything else looks different. It allows you to receive and un, unclaim that resentment, unclaim all of that devastation, but receive the faith that God wants to give you. It allows you to free your mind of clutter where you can say, I'm at a place now where I can receive that faith and that miracle. Number two is believe that God is present that he is here with you every step of the way, that he wants you to talk to him man to man like he's a friend. 
He wants you to tell your deepest heart, your deepest pain. He wants you to say, I hurt. I need help. I don't have the faith right now, but I pray you'll help me get there. And he will. And how does he do that? Through all of the scripture that he gives us, all through the Bible. I, we have given, been given promises that he has kept over and over and over again, but we still can doubt. We still fear. We still have devastation. Those are the seasons that happen in our life. The third is acquire a genuine peace. The Flint, Flint family, once they got through that devastation, once they, they started getting hopeful, once they started believing, once they started having a little significant amount of faith, the miracle started happening. And they had an, a genuine peace that God's in this. He had proved himself. He had proved that if you believe, if you keep believing, if you keep moving forward, if you keep going forward, that he's got a plan and a purpose, and he's going to orchestrate it just as he has the gathering, just as he has all of your lives individually. And also the, the last one is believe that it's a partnership with God. He's arm in arm with us. And again, we have 66 books in the Bible that he talks to us daily. If we, don't, if we don't open it, if we don't listen to it, that's our problem. Because he said all it takes is that small, little amount of faith to move a mountain. And if we have the faith, we can believe in miracles. I'm expecting miracles. As you sit there, I'm sure all of your devastation, because I know many of your pains, I've, I've talked with you throughout the years. We are connected to God and each other. Yay, God. We are a unique place that we get to come and hear a message of hope and grace and love into our lives and forgiveness to other people, but we can move forward. And as we look at the gathering and how I know and you know that God orchestrated it, he created a miracle here, 2006. And while I know that our new normal that occurred April the 2nd, 2012, it has been not something that we would have chosen. But yet, because of our small amount of faith, he has moved mountains. <laughs> he has, this is a year and a half later, and we're here. And God is going to really perform a miracle in your life and the gathering's life this year. I know that without a doubt because we have that faith. And when we don't, we're going to remember it just requires that small amount of faith. Whatever resentment I need to release, let me release it. Whatever pain I need to release, it's not doing you any good to hang on to it. Release it. Give it to God. But have that, re uh, duplicate it with the faith. Replace it with the faith that God says you can have and create a miracle. Two things that I know right now in this moment that God has shown up in a miracle with the gathering just the last two months and I know without any doubt that he's going to continue showing up in the year 2014. It's because when I sent an e-blast out and said, we're trusting God in this process. This is where we are. I need to talk to you right now. I need to share with you where we are as a church. But I'm not believing that God's not done with us. But if he is, we will move forward gracefully and still hopeful in our life. But God's not done with us. He's shown us. A couple months ago when I sent that simple e-blast e out, many received it, gave above and beyond their tithes and offerings. Thank you, Jesus. Many have been blessed by something that happened in their life, and they gave money above and beyond toward the gathering to say, we still have that faith we're going to move this dadgum mountain. We're going to make this theater continue to be a place of hope and grace and mercy for people who want to come and connect to God and each other and let them walk away with the hope of Jesus Christ. Many of you gave above and beyond. I had two families who gave $10,000 each 
who just said, I know God's in this. I know it. And do you know the cool thing is that when you give, God will give back. So even those people who gave above and beyond, that wasn't given in vain. God is going to multiply that in their life as well. So it's a win-win situation here. But I also want to tell you about our, as we progress, as far as a speaking pastor. I know there is someone or many people that God wants to lead here and to speak the same vision, the same dreams, the same theology, the same principles that we have as the gathering. That's really important. And so as God opens doors and closes them, I've met and spoke with many people during this year's time. And there have been many that have been that close, and God just shut the door. But I've walked away and said, God, thank you for loving us well enough to know that you're not going to give us something that's not going to be a good fit. There is someone, something that has been praying for a church just like this that is ready to receive them. And I believe without all my, with all of my heart that if we continue to pray and have the faith, even that small, that God's going to reward us with an amazing miracle. As I was going through our, our message and preparing and looked up the word miracle and talk, and just thinking about what is a miracle? How can we acquire it? I wrote down the word miracle and, and came up with an acronym that expresses what we as a gathering, what you as individuals, what me as an individual, what I as an individual <laughs> can acquire with a miracle. The, the, the M was a miracle of the meaning of relationships with God and each other. We have an amazing church. I hope you know that. You are loved well by God. I know I am loved well by you guys, and I hope you know that I love you well. But we have an amazing relationship with God, number one, but with each other. And by embracing each other during this time, through whatever season you're going on, we can continue to acquire the faith that result is a miracle. The eyes are irreplaceable, irreplaceable passion for growing the church and believing that God has us in his care. I do believe that. I have no doubt about that. The direction God is guiding us in, the many people that I'm speaking to, the many people that you have referred me to, God is using all of those tools to get in the process of getting to what God knows that is right for us and that we're right for him. The renegade spirit, get up, suit up, show up, and do the next right thing. And trust God for the result. We've been doing that, and we'll continue to do that. And I am amazed every Sunday morning when we come together and we're in this amazing movement of helping hurting, messy people in their relationship with God and each other. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm pretty, I think everyone in here could say right now, there's something that I haven't heard about. I know that. That's because we're, we're human. I had a, I received word last night that a person that's been in my life for quite some time now, for probably 25 years, that she had chosen to take her life. And that is just, um, that bothers me. And the fact that you think there are people hurting so desperately that all they can think of is my escape. They haven't come to a place in their life of freeing from resentment and pain and disappointment and hurts and people that have disappointed you, whatever your relationships are, but they felt like they could not get up and face the next day. I'm grateful that we are getting up, suiting up, showing up and doing the next right thing, trusting God for the results. Our absolute trust in God, the clarity of our vision. Our absolute trust in God is I just covered that. But every day when we get up 
our absolute trust that God has us in his care, that he's going to take us that next step. He's going to keep performing a miracle in my life, in your life, as well as the church congregation. Yay, God. He's going to keep sending us people that connect to him and each other and that we can give them hope in their life. The clarity of our vision. I am have to say at this moment, I was super impressed with our advanced team. When we met with someone that we had prayed about, and I felt like they could be a God thing, but there was just something that I wasn't getting a piece about. And when we came together with the advanced team, I was so proud that I walked away and I told my daughters, they've got it. They understand who we are as a church. They understand we don't need traditional church. We need to help people, no matter where they are in their state, when they come to hear a message from God. We need to teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ that no matter where they are in their relationship, they can walk away and go, I think I can make it the next day. I think I've got a little more faith that I can look at that mustard seed and take me, move that mountain that's in my life. Yay, God. So the clarity of our vision, the lessons that we know are worth walking through. There's so many times in my life that I have thought, surely one day I will have achieved the fact that I have an adult, I am a mature adult, adult responsible person, that I don't need any more lessons. But they just keep coming. <laughs> but we know that in all things, God works together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Establish a more than enough attitude. God wants great things for us. If we have faith, we're going to receive it. And the last is surrender it to God. I am today and every day of my life giving my heart, my mind, my body, everything within me to God. Because he's never, ever proven wrong. He's always been faithful. And I have no doubt to believe that he's going to continue that. And he wants to go with us a miracle. I know that. It takes that little faith. Wow. Pretty awesome, isn't it? In Isaiah 43, when he talks about all the miracles that he has done in the Bible, he, goes, he talks about the roads that he has built right through the ocean. He's talked about that he's carved a path through pounding waves. The God who summons horses and chariots and armies, they lie down and then can't get up. They're snu they've snuffed out like so many candles. Forget about what's happened in our history. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new and create history right here. We're, we are part of something so big that would have failed if God had not shown up. Yay, God. We are part of that. Today, as we come right this moment, as I'm ending, Matthew 18, 20, it says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. I will hear and answer prayer. As we close, I, I pray wherever you are in your heart, wherever you are in your resentment, in your anger, in your pain, in your devastation, or in your freedom, that we will all be at a place where we are ready to accept the miracle that God wants to give us, all because of our faith. Let's pray. Dear God, as we come before you today, I love you, and I'm so in awe of all the promises that you have given us throughout all of your word, dear God, and what's so awesome that I have received it all of my life, but I've received it firsthand so many times every day of my life in the last year. And dear God, you've proven yourself because you said you would, not because I'd, we'd have to doubt, but because you said it. No matter where, what state we're in, 
you are true to your promises. And Father, I pray that right now, I know personally there are people who have had a very devastating year. I pray that right now that their faith can grow to the point that they're believing in a miracle in 2014. Individually, they believe in that miracle, and every day when we look at our mustard seed, we can be reminded of that symbol that our faith, so small, can move a mountain. And Father, I pray that at this moment in our life right now, we're trusting you for great things. Father, I am so very hopeful. I believe that with our faith, you are getting ready to produce the largest miracle that's not going to be silent in the year 2014. I love you, God, and I thank you for all you're going to do, all you've done, and all you are at this very minute doing in our lives. Amen. Let's go get them, guys.